Hey, Steve and Yanni here, back doing the junkyard crawl. The snow is mostly gone here at Berniston Auto Wrecking in Berniston, Massachusetts, but we are back. And this is a car you might have seen a couple days ago on my um, backstage pass video where I did the, uh, the, the secret sauce and how I make notes on cars. Well, indeed, this is a 1965 Chevy Chevelle Malibu Super Sport. And we know it's a Super Sport because we don't see extra chrome gingerbread along the body here. And we'll get into more of that. But of course, 65 was the second year for Chevrolet's mid-sized A-body platform. And in 1965, a total of 15% of all Chevys sold were mid-sized cars, slightly higher than 64 the debut year. But in 1970, 22% of all Chevrolets were mid-sized A-body platform Chevelles and Malibus. So this was really a big, big part of the Chevy sales picture in 1965. Now, the base price on this car when it was new was $2,486 as a Super Sport, and we'll get into that in a second. And here's the thing, as a Super Sport, about one quarter of the 358,000 Chevy Chevelle sold in 1965 were Super Sports. So again, one out of four Chevelle Malibus was a Super Sport two-door like this one here. So very popular, the Super Sport. Now, when you say Super Super Sport, most people think, you know, a hot rod, right? Well, what's this on the fender? It says 230. What? Well, the base engine in the Super Sport was 194 horsepower in line six with 120 horsepower. And for an extra $37, you get the 140 horsepower 230. So the six cylinder engine was standard in Super Sport uh, Malibu until 66 when the, the 396 came along and nothing else. But again, with one exception, 1965 saw this, the Chevelle Z16. 201 of these things were made, and yet these are the only 65 Chevelles with a 396. This is Ravel's kit from 1996, a great way to learn about Chevelle. In fact, we can see here's the body with no extra chrome trim on it, the SS the 396 emblems on the front fenders, which of course would be very popular in years 66, 67. Nice model, this one here, actually with a separate frame and all detailing underneath, cool stuff. And again, there's that four speed only 396. That's the uh, 375 horsepower solid lifter version of the 396. But this one here, well, there's nothing going on, but again, those fenders don't lie. This was the 230, so a very uh, base car, manual drum brakes, as they, they were. There was no uh, disc brakes until 1967, but again, the manual pot here also seen through 1966. Manual steering, kind of a, kind of a stripper. No air conditioning seen on this one, but uh, we do see the cowl tag, and sure enough, uh, 138, yep, that's a Super Sport right there. We also see paint code CC, Ermine White, 786 for trim. That means it had a red gut. But again, 138 tells us this was born a Super Sport two-door. Now, get to remember that the base Chevelle was the Chevelle 300, and then it was the Chevelle 300 Deluxe, and then the Malibu, and then the Malibu Super Sport, which we have right here. Now, the wheels on this one are later, 70, 71 up, 14-inch rally wheels, seen often on like Novas and Camaros of 1970, 71 onward. Uh, not factory stuff, but they bolt right on. Inside, of course, and this, of, this is a two-door hardtop, so there's no pillar here, which you could find on a Chevelle 300 or 300 Deluxe, but this, again, is a two-door hardtop. But there is the uh, clock in the middle of the circular instrument cluster. Yep, super sport stuff right there. And as a super sport in 1965, standard bucket seats, and that hole in the floor is where the console-mounted power glide automatic used to poke through right there. Now the seats on this one are kind of interesting. Uh, this would have had bucket seats from the factory for sure, red buckets as the code tells us, uh, but somebody along the way has installed on this one a high back bucket, probably out of a Maybe a Firebird? Not sure, a later car, of course, the high back bucket. But even right here, we see something kind of weird. This is the remains of a Pontiac bucket seat right here. So again, these cars were subjected to the whims of their buyers and owners along the year. So somebody along the way played uh, hopscotch with the interior on this one. But we see here the, the optional belt, the seat belt here, the lap belt, not been used much. You can see it's all fresh, the GM uh, tag right there with the retractor. 
And of course, I think it was January 1st of 1968 that uh, seat belts were mandated on all cars, but again, they were still optional in 1965. Now, getting back to what this car could have been, here's Car Life magazine, September 1965, with road testing the Chevelle 396. And inside here, there it is, man, the Z16. And it says here, Pontiac led the way with its GTO, a combination of Tempest chassis and styling with a 389 engine. Oldsmobile brought along its 442, an F85 with a hot 330, and later a 400. Then last spring, Buick announced the Grand Sport, a 401 cubic inch V8 powered special. The question remained, what would Chevrolet do? Well, the answer was, Chevrolet unveiled its new 396 V8 early in 65. The Whopper was available, presto, change -o, the Chevelle 396 supercar. There's little doubt that che Chevrolet will produce SS 396 in sufficient quantity during the 66 model year. It's true. Only 201 were built in 65, kind of as a test of the market. And we can see this story is really pretty much in depth. And here's the big thing. It says, where the normal Chevelle had an eight and a quarter inch ring gear, 10 bolt, the 396 has the 8.8 .8 inch gear out of the larger Chevrolet. It's the 12 bolt. Now the most quizzical part is the brakes. It says larger brakes are borrowed from the big Chevrolet too. And they're 11 inch drums with 2.75 inch shoes wide. Now the crazy part is that in, production for 66, the big 11 inch brakes weren't used on the SS396. Instead, they had the same nine and a half inch drums used on six cylinders like this one. Don't know why that is, probably cost cutting, but uh, with that said, if this was a Z16 Chevelle 1965, there's no way in heck it would still be here in the junkyard. Uh, just saying. Now here at the back, <clears throat> We can see a couple of little things. The SS logo and uh, all of that is missing from here, but the extra holes tell us it is an SS. And it had the trunk mounted antenna for its AM radio, because the hole with the cable right there was to have been kind of cool, like a speedboat coming down the road. And at the back, the original Supersport trim panel is gone, but uh, would have had a, a, a dark section through here, long ago faded to oblivion. Ugh! And inside the trunk, well, there you go. Rust has taken its toll. And we can see a nice uh, factory lightweight effect with all the, the salt corrosion. Uh, people used to spend big money to acid dip their pro stockers in the uh, early 70s and natural free acid dipping on this one here, courtesy of mother nature. But here's the thing right here. This is a 1965 Chevelle dealer brochure. And this was originally Gannon Motors out of Westboro, uh, Massachusetts. And on this, we see on the, on the cover, a regular Malibu. And again, the hard top body, not the sedan, but sometimes dealer brochures like this show bloopers. This is the new Malibu Super Sport, but look at the quarter panel, those two horizontal vents. They're shown here on the SS. We know it's an SS, we've got that in the back, but I've never seen one of these in production. Meanwhile, on page 10, we see yet another image showing those never were vents on the back of the quarter panel right here. And there it is. Oops, parts one and two. So again, in some cases, either tooling breaks, decisions are changed at the last minute. Who can say? But again, those quarter panel uh, sort of emblems, no sign of them here. They were never there. And again, I've never seen one with those in place. But again, this one is a full frame car, unlike uh, Chrysler's midsize vehicles and Fords, which are unit construction. So Chevrolet and Pontiac, Olds and Buick on their A-body midsize cars all utilized body on frame construction, just like the full size cars, but on an eight tenths platform. But these are popular cars. Again, this one in ermine white with the red interior must have been a stunner when it was new. No vinyl top, not necessarily. And again, as a super sport, doesn't have the extra gingerbread chrome that kind of clutters the body on lesser Malibus and of course the 300 series cars, you'd see those on the deluxes. But again, this one here is pretty much all done with that steering column inside of there is a special piece. It does not have a column shifter. So if you have a four speed Chevelle project, uh, you could probably grab that column or a Super Sport because again, it doesn't have a stick popping out of the side of it for either a manual or automatic. So kind of an interesting bunch of pieces still possibly useful on this 65 Chevelle SS 236 cylinder car. Well, if you like this video, be sure to subscribe to the Steve Mag's YouTube channel, ring the bell and uh, hit the like button and tell your friends about this. And again, the like or the bell will remind you when the next video happens, which is tomorrow morning.